Let's take it to the mat. Thank you for joining me for week eight of our YoPro Fitness Challenge. Today is a very mellow class. We will be relaxing down on our back. So all of the poses, postures, and stretches that we do today will be on our back in a supine position. Come on, let's start there. <laughs> all right, so making your way down, we are going to begin with uh, some deep breaths. So I want you to get comfortable. You might like to stretch your legs out or if you're just coming down to the floor for the first time, it can be a little nicer for the lower back to acclimatize to this position if you keep your feet flat and your knees drop in towards one another. Your arms can be relaxed down by your side or you can just bring them onto the belly Sometimes I like to feel the sensation of my breath into my hands. And let's start by taking a full breath in through the nose. Feel free to close the eyes. And out of the mouth. Two more like this. Deep breath in. And out. One more. Exhale it out. And just take a few deep breaths in and out through your nose. And start to feel the floor, the mat beneath you supporting your entire body weight. Can you relax your head? Can you relax your shoulders? Invite yourself into this practice with a quieter mind. Let go of your to-do list, your worries. Just let yourself lay back and relax. One more full breath where you are. And then when you're ready, you can open the eyes, start to move a little bit through the extremities, the hands, the feet. And we're gonna reach the arms up above the head, interlace the fingers and push your palms away from you. Feel your shoulders lift up towards your earlobes and when you're ready, you can stretch your legs all the way out. And I want you to really reach your top and your bottom apart from one another. From here, we're moving into banana asana, so creating a nice C curve in the body. Let's walk our feet to the bottom right corner of the mat. We'll keep the hips and the shoulders nice and flat. And then wiggle your upper body, your arms to the top right corner of your mat. Once you're here, you want to start to feel uh, the breath expanding and stretching all along that left side of the body. But if you are wanting a little more, bring your hands behind your head and then reach this right elbow further down towards the feet and take another two deep breaths there. Stretch the body out, come back into center. Find that length again as you reach long and then transition across to the left with the feet and the arms and hands. You're welcome to stay here or interlace and wiggle the elbow down a little further. One more breath there. And coming back into center. Now we do spend most of well, all of this class on our back today. So if you need a moment to change the position that you're in, feel free to. Probably one of my most relaxed favorite positions is just hugging my knees in and rocking from side to side. So just take this practice as it comes for you, as you should with all of your practices on the mat. Our bodies can feel different day to day or will feel different day to day. Hands will come on tops of the knees. Now we're just going to add a little bit of movement through the hips. So flossing out the hip joints with some circular motions. You might hear some clicks. You might feel like you haven't stretched your inner thighs or adductors in a little while. Don't worry, we're going to do that today. Change that direction, take it the other way. And then let's land the feet down, hip width distance apart, 
You're going to cross your right ankle over your left knee. We've practiced this in previous uh, hip opener sequences, I think it was. We're gonna reach back for the back of our left thigh. And as you do, you might notice that you push your right elbow into your right thigh. If that's not you today, don't worry. We're just gonna draw the legs in towards us while still keeping the sacrum, the lower back, pressing down into the mat. And we begin here in this figure four reverse pigeon to open up the hips. You'll notice that the stretches on your back are very well aligned. Your spine can't curve unless you tip your tail up there, but we're really aiming to keep the lower back down. And when we keep the posture straight as we are right now, the stretch can be a little bit deeper than if we were sitting upright. We're gonna move this into reverse pigeon by grabbing a hold of the outer edge, or the sorry, the sole of your right foot, and then threading your right arm under your right leg, float your left leg all the way down to the floor. And you're gonna draw that foot, the right foot across towards your left shoulder. And you'll notice here there is quite a space between my pubic bone, the back of the thigh and my heel. I'm trying to keep that 90 degree angle in this leg as I pull it across. Sometimes what can happen is the heel can drop down towards the pubic bone or towards the groin and you'll start to lose that hip opener sensation. So aiming to keep the 90 degree angle and then enticing it across the body. Let's just take another three breaths here. Inhale, exhale. Inhale and exhale and slowly kick the heel up towards the ceiling. Grab a hold of the back of the leg. Of course, if you need a little bend in the knee, that's totally fine. We are coming into our supine hamstring stretch. So as best you can draw your leg in towards you, flex your toes down and push your heel away. You have three breaths. Heavy head, try to relax your shoulders. One more breath, draw the leg in a little further. And then slowly, and we're gonna take this leg out wide. So keeping the tension of the leg drawing towards you, with your right hand, you're gonna guide the leg to fall out wide. You might use your left hand on your hip, or you can expand your left arm out wide for balance. And you're gonna let the leg fall out and across as far as you can. Your leg might be all the way down on the floor. I'm a little constricted here with my space, but as long as you're allowing the leg to still be drawn towards you as you drop it out, you should be feeling quite a deep stretch through the adductors, the inner thigh, along with the hamstrings here. If you're somebody that struggles with these deep holds and these deep stretches, bring your focus back to the breath. Just two more here. Last one. And slowly coming back into center. Let's draw the leg in close. We'll feel those hamstrings once again. And then now grabbing a hold of the right leg with your left hand, I want you to take your left hand on the outside of the right leg in preparation to tip the leg over towards the left. You'll feel your right glute or butt lift off the floor, reach back with your right hand to help keep you grounded through the shoulders and then let that right leg fall all the way or as far as it feels good for you. We are aiming to keep the leg as straight as possible, but if you need that little bend, don't hesitate. And if you do feel a, quite a deep tension in this twist, either come out of it or just bend the knee completely for a little less tension. The less the lever, so the shorter the lever, the less the tension you'll be feeling. Just two more breaths here. And slowly back into center. One more drawing in of your right leg. Feel your hamstrings. And then slowly let it go. Oh, shake that out. We'll move straight over to the next side. So bring those feet in hip width distance, knees bent. Your left foot will cross over, toes 
are flexed and you're going to reach for the back of the right thigh, pushing that left elbow onto the left knee if that's where you are today. If not, just thinking about keeping the lower back as stable and grounded as possible and the hinging forward of the legs comes from the hips. You'll feel that glute stretch through the left side. Breathe here. Moving into your reverse pigeon pose, hold the sole of your left foot, hook your left arm underneath your left leg and then float your right leg all the way down. Remembering to keep a 90 degree angle in this left leg that's in front of you and draw the left heel across, across in the direction of your right shoulder. Never has to meet it there, but just a directional cue for you to use. Very, very slowly, we're going to kick that leg all the way up towards the ceiling. If you need to give it a little shake, feel free. We're reaching for the back of your left leg for your supine hamstring stretch. Draw the leg in towards you as best you can. Option for the knee to be bent, but make sure those toes are curling down in that flexed position. Deep breath in and out. Deep breath in. And out. One more here. Oh, I've got the shakes today. Using your left hand on the left leg, guide the leg out wide. We can reach our right arm in the opposite direction for balance. Once you've found the depth of your stretch here, allow your left leg to feel really heavy so that gravity draws it down with each breath that you take. And then coming back into center, let's find that hamstring stretch once again, draw the leg in close before we guide it over towards the right side. So twisting over, let your leg fall as far across as you can here. You can reach your left arm back, relax the shoulder down. Keeping in mind if you need to bend the knee, I think I will on this side just for space purposes and then dropping it as far across as it feels good for your back here. Deep breath in and out. Deep breath in and slowly coming back into the center of the mat. We'll kick the heel up one last time for your hamstring stretch. Bring it in, full breath in. And out. And let's let the leg go. And you can give it out a little shake out on the ground there before you bring both knees in towards your chest. Add that little rock if it feels nice for you. And we're going to evolve into our happy baby pose. So kick your heels up towards the ceiling. Grab a hold of the outer edges of the ankle or the feet, wherever you're able to reach there. And I want your knees to be outside. So they're externally rotating the knees there and you're going to pull down with the hands, whether they're on the ankles or on the soles of the feet, pull down, knees dropping out wide. If you can, you can hook your elbows on the inside of your calves. So again, just hooking those in. It might feel nice for you to rock from side to side. If not, stillness is also fine. You'll be feeling that deep compression through the front of your hips, shortening through the hip flexors, but hopefully a nice release through the back of the legs, the glutes, the lower back. And then slowly, slowly releasing those feet back down, hip width distance on the mat, bent knees. We're going to finish our supine practice today with one more twist. I want you to cross your right leg over the top of the left. There's two options from here. You can keep your left foot on the floor and let the legs fall to the left, or you can lift that left foot off the floor, depending on that how, how that feels for you, and then let the legs 
fall across to the left. They may or may not touch the floor, so just use your opposite side, your right side, to reach back and stabilize. If you are on the floor there, make sure that you're relaxing a lot through your exhale. So inhale, you'll feel the belly expand. Exhale, surrender into the twist. And again. Coming back through center, preparing for the other side. Feet can be flat as you cross your left leg over the right. You can keep that right foot down or float it off. We'll tip the legs across. Reach back with your left arm and take some nice full breaths there. And coming back into center, unravel your legs. You're welcome to finish in whichever posture feels best for you. Today, I'm going to finish in Supta Baddha Kanasana, laying butterfly pose, the soles of the feet together, knees dropping out wide. If you're joining me here and your hips are feeling a little tight or, or sore through the inner thighs, feel free to hold the bottom of the thighs or just relax your arms down by your side or on your belly. This practice is a beautiful way to unwind at the end of the day. Especially if you're someone who has a desk job or is slouching. Sometimes in this day and age, it's not even having a desk job. It could be that you're just hunched over your phone for hours. And this supine practice allows you to keep your shoulders back, your chest open. Beautiful aligned posture on your back while you stretch out the legs. Dive into three more breaths here. And slowly helping yourself up, hug those knees in. Make your way up to a comfortable seat. Thank you for taking the time in your day to practice with me on our backs. I hope you're feeling a little more relaxed and open. Next week is the final week we'll be on the mat together. So I look forward to bringing everything that we've learned, all the elements of the past eight weeks together. Until then, I'll see you on the mat.